Hey friends, over 77% of transaction revenue in the world touches an SAP system and more SAP systems are running in the cloud each year. And if your company's SAP system is running on Azure, there's a lot of ways to work with that data. Holger Bruthalt is here to show me how today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Holger and we're going to learn all about working with data from SAP and Azure and Office 365. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you very much, Scott. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for bringing me cool demos and new things. I'm going to learn about new ways to get data from SAP. You know, I haven't worked with an SAP system uh, in a long time, but everyone in their lives at some point touches an SAP system, even though they don't know that they're doing it. Actually, I think you have touched an SAP system. The thing um, is Microsoft is a huge customer of SAP. Um, so we, when whenever we create a leaf request, whenever we um, sell an Xbox, when we look at our supply chain, we are actually um, working with an SAP system. So um, SAP is, is actually a, a really important partner for us. We are, we are really working um, with SAP as a customer, SAP as a partner, to, because a lot of our joint enterprise customers are actually um, also using um, SAP systems. Very cool. Now, and then when that's running in Azure now, we have even more things available to us and more powerful ways to communicate with those systems. Exactly, exactly. And, and especially when we look at um, some of our, most of our customers actually are still running um, older SAP systems. So SAP is roughly five, 50 years old or something like that. So obviously they have a huge on-premises um, footprint. They have a lot of legacy application. And one of the things that we, that we typically start with customers is that they want to migrate their existing on-premises um, SAP systems into Azure, where they um, have obviously much more flexibility when it comes to uh, virtual machine sizes, um, 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 right sizing, tight sizing, stopping virtual machines if they are not used and stuff like that. And that is one area where we're really working very closely um, with SAP to make sure that we have these um, right um, virtual machines available. Because especially when we look at SAP, it's, it's really um, funny or really interesting because um, they have um, systems that really require a lot of memory. So we have virtual machines now on Azure that have 12 terabytes of memory, which is which is all memory. We're not talking about disk size, but really memory. Or specifically for SAP, we have these SAP HANA on Azure large instances that, that even go up to 24 terabytes of memory. So and, and we do have customers that are actually using this on, on Azure. So it, so this is for me always the foundational work where we can help customers to get their workload on Azure and they, they can really operate it there. I really like that term foundational work and that is really great. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that foundational work and you're gonna build upon it and you're gonna show us something that actually touches uh, a real person. So your demo will show me like what I would see, right? As for exactly. someone who's developing and someone who's experiencing it as a user. Exactly, because as you said in, in, your, in your very first words, and a lot of users are using SAP, but they don't even know um, that they're using it because SAP is this huge um, uh, um, ERP system um, that that is used for supply chain, for HR stuff like that, and and typically you don't want or you don't need to access it um, natively, and and that's why we have a lot of functionalities on on Azure that help our customers to yeah still connect to these SAP systems in a much more easy and and user friendly way. I would say. Brilliant. Let's let's see it. Yeah. Perfect. So what I typically want to start with is um, at build um, earlier this year, Satya Nadella talked about the Microsoft Cloud. And that is that is for me really one of the starting points um, that I always like to highlight because Azure is obviously fantastic. And we, we have a, a great foundation there with uh, the virtual machines, with compute, with storage, with past services like security, the monitoring services, backup services, and so on. But um, when we extend this with the other components that we have in the Microsoft Cloud, like Microsoft 365, like LinkedIn, the Power Platform, GitHub, there are so many word, uh, um, areas where we actually work extremely well also with SAP. And actually, that, that's something um, where we started to see a lot of customers that start by just running their SAP workload in Azure, then um, leveraging also other Azure PaaS services, um, again, like, for example, Azure Sentinel to also um, look inside your SAP system. But then we have these, these surrounding brackets, basically, where we extend an SAP um, workload. And let me, let me actually maybe quickly start by 
I'm switching over to my Azure portal. For example, here I have a, um, a virtual machine running um, that I'm using basically just as a container to um, have my um, my SAP systems running, where I also have some some SAP tools um, installed. And what I could do now is I could just um, RDP into this um, this um, virtual machine and then work from there. What I want to start with, actually, since I'm here an administrator, I'm using Bastion. And with Azure Bastion, I can connect from my browser into this virtual machine. And so I, I don't need to care about setting up um, a, a VPN network or something like that between my um, computer that I'm working with um, right now to this virtual machine. I can really just do this from within the browser. And what I want to start with is this SAP logon. So this is SAP's proprietary tool to um, connect to an SAP system. It has been around for many, many years. And it is a very good um, um, tool for the power user. So um, if I log on here with my SAP credentials, SAP has their own um, identity management store. Then, for example, similar like, or it reminds me somewhat like um, PowerShell. If I'm the power user and I know, for example, here, these transaction codes, I can go into the SAP system. And now, since I am the power user, I can just look, for example, at this product. So there's a product with this ID HD2000. And now I, I see this, this product in the SAP system. So product name, product description. And, and product price or something like that. Now, obviously, this is something that is not super user friendly. This is not something that that you, for example, would log on on a, on a daily basis. What you would probably much rather prefer is a browser based experience. And that's what SAP also has um, introduced a few years ago. And this is now what they call an SAP Fiori application. It's um, HTML, JavaScript, OData um, to connect to the SAP system. And what we've done here is um, we, we're using Azure Active Directory for the authentication. So instead of me remembering my SAP credentials, as, as you've seen before when I um, logged on to the um, SAP logon screen here, now I can really log on with my Microsoft credentials. You can see I'm redirected here to Microsoft Online. We're doing the whole authentication. So I, I could have also used the um, multi-factor authentication and, and stuff like that. But now I, I, I'm here in this Fiori user interface. I can click here on this um, specific tile. And now I um, get a list of the, the very same products that we just saw before from the SAP system. Now, um, what we've done here, um, is, and if I just um, continue to look at this specific product, so where I can see the, the screen and everything here, then since I am now authenticated with Azure Active Directory, I can not only see the information here coming from the SAP system, so um, again, the product ID, the price, maybe the supplier name, but I can also click here on this product ID. And what we are now doing, since, again, I am authenticated with Azure Active Directory, I can do a Microsoft um, a graph call to the Microsoft ecosystem, so to say, and really retrieve information that is stored um, not within SAP, but, but um, in, in the Microsoft area. So for example, this is an email um, that I sent before when I, when I did my dry run um, to, to this user. And maybe I can just um, send another email here um, to, to this user so that when I um, close this window here, and we'll just wait for the email to arrive, if I click on this link again, then hopefully in a second, we should see not only one entry here, but, but, but a second one. Um, uh, for some reason, the, the email is not arriving right now, but I uh, here it is. There Let it is. Close it again and open it up again so that you can really see this is a live call. Now I have two emails here. So, oh. and that is for me really the, the first really special thing. I, as an end user, I probably don't even care whether the data is coming from SAP or whether the data is coming from Exchange or is stored in Teams or in OneDrive or something like that. I'm just interested in working with the information with the data that I have. And here, by combining, basically using Azure Active Directory as the foundation for, for my identity, I can easily get access to data from the SAP system but I can also get the information um, from Microsoft 365. And you've got all that integrated in one kind of pane of glass. And it's so interesting when I see people working with systems, um, often the, the frontline people, the people who are on the front lines in the store, in the call center, they suffer the most because they are having, uh, I've even seen solutions like we can't fix the software, but we'll use multiple monitors and multiple screens and copy paste and macros. Here, they're seeing emails directly in an integrated system in Azure on top of SAP, and they're working with a system that they don't have to leave. 
yeah. and try to, why should systems integration occur on the glass in the front office of the people who are really trying to do the work? They're going to end up clicking around. This is, this opens up a whole bunch of potential possibilities to make their lives easier. Absolutely. And I think the, the, the next thing um, that reminded me, I think a few weeks back, you had a very nice um, discussion on TikTok on um, what development tools should one use? Should I use Vim? Should I use Visual Studio Code or something mm -hmm. like that? And um, one thing that you said was, um, look, use whatever you like. Um, if you like Vim, then, then use Vim. If you like Visual Studio Code, then go with Visual Studio Code. Use Visual Studio. So it's really up to you what, what probably fits best in the situation that you currently are. And I think the very same thing is even true or even more relevant for, for end users. So maybe I am this power user that likes to work with the SAP logon that I that I sh showed you before. M maybe I like here um, this, this browser-based UI. Mm -hmm. Maybe I like to work with my data in Excel. Mm. And that's actually something um, that is um, really powerful, where you also see SAP and Microsoft working together on open standards. So both of us, we are really uh, adopting OData as the protocol to interact um, with the SAP system. And because of that, um, all data can natively be read from Excel. So with this, I can very easily connect my Excel sheet to my SAP system and retrieve all of this product information directly from the SAP system. Now, what I can also do, and um, let me just continue our story here um, with our product HD2000 here. And so you can see here again, um, this uh, DVDs um, player, whatever. And you can see here down here um, the price. So we, we have a hundred US dollar um, for, for this DVD player. Now, what I can do is I can use Power Automate Flow. So Power Automate is this um, low code, no code um, tool that we have um, as, as part as, as before of the Power Platform, where I can automate um, certain steps. And what I can do here directly from within Excel I can create um, a power, I have already created a Power Automate flow that allows me now to, um, if I update this price here, let's say if we, we increase the price quite heavily from 100 US dollars to 200 US dollars. Now if I click on run, I can just execute this um, Power Automate flow and it will update um, the price um, in my SAP system. So um, if we go back later or if we refresh a page um, on, the, on the SAP side, we would now see the updated price there. What I really want to highlight is the simplicity, simplicity of, of how this can be done. So if I take a look at this, um, this flow, it, it basically has a trigger. If something happens here on Excel, then, well, I, I just sent an email for me for, for debugging purposes. But then what I do is I, I call an OData service um, on the SAP side. And the way how I'm doing this is on Azure, I have um, created um, an API, or I'm using the API management service on the Azure side. This API management is running in the very same v virtual network as my SAP system. And from there, I have exposed the OData services um, that are relevant to interact with the SAP system and made them available um, via yeah, a public URL, basically. And this is the URL that I'm calling um, then from my Power Automate flow. So, so there's um, one service here for, for, for the products. Um, okay, this is the one for the create. If I would scroll down, there's also um, a, a service to um, update um, the product information in the SAP system. But, but we, are, we are going from, Power, from, from Excel, Power Automate via the Azure API management into my, my SAP system. And with this, I can very easily update the data um, directly from Excel. Yeah. Maybe one other thing that I quickly want to highlight, which I found really um, mind blowing, um, um, I, I'm I'm doing all of this in a browser. So if if we just look back a, a few years, um, uh, such extensions were only possible um, if you had your um, Excel running on your Windows desktop. You needed to install um, some um, 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 Excel extension that you need to do roll out to thousands of clients or something like that. Here. I'm running really Excel with this beautiful extension with the with the Power Automate flow directly in the browser. And this would also work on your iPad, on your Android device, obviously on your on your Mac computer. It's 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 really amazing from my point of view where we've evolved and how easy it is now to um even work with SAP data from something like um like Excel. Yeah, it really can't be overstated how much has happened in the last 10 or 15 years around open standards, embracing HTTP 
REST, uh, then OData on top of that. And then now you are in the cloud using things like APIM, Azure API Management. And you've got now, and I know you're both, you and I both are fans of Lego. You've got these Lego bricks and you just snapped uh, Azure API Management in there so cleanly because it makes sense to provide a projection of an alternate API that could then be used by Excel. And when within Excel, you want to expose that data. So you have Power Automate Flow. And those Lego bricks snapped together so mm -hmm. cleanly would be unheard of and would have been a mess of, uh, of things just even five, 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. That's and, brilliant. And because of the standardization, um, because of we are all using the same Lego bricks, um, um, well, the integration in, in, in Word, for example, is equally similar. So uh, let's say I want to create a, a document in Word and um, I want to contact the supplier of this um, HD 2000 product. And um, I can remember the, the name was um, Tacom, but I, I forgot the, the exact address of this um, specific supplier. So what I can do is now, I could obviously still use Power Automate Flow or something like that, but just to show the possibility, the options that we have, um, I could go into Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code now and, and develop an, a, a web add-in also for Excel. But what I actually like to just play around and test is this add-in that we have also, again, in Word, in a browser called Script Lab. And Script Lab allows me to um, write some um, TypeScript code here directly in Word in, in, in the browser. And um, actually, what I'm doing is, is fairly simple. I'm, I'm just... Um, looking at um, the uh, the word that I have um, selected here, and then I'll call a logic app in this case. So so again, I, I could have done um, an API call, API management call directly, but um, I'm I'm just going via logic app because I'll do some modification of the response that I'm got, getting from the SAP system, and then I'm just um, printing the results directly in the Word document. So let me quickly show you how how this would work. So I'm I have selected here this address. I click on FAT address from SAP. Now we are making this OData call into the SAP system, and I get the address information directly back in my um, in my Word document. Hmm. And again, this is this is really really simple. It's just um, a logic apps call that I'm doing here. So I'm just calling a URL. I'm passing some. Um, I, I'm posting some some information. Then I get the response back from the SAP system. So or actually from from logic apps. So if I take a look at this um, Logic app here in, in Azure. Uh, it, it has obviously an HTTP trigger point where I pass the um, parameters from my um, TypeScript um, event. So this is just the, the endpoint. I'm, and I'm expecting here a business partner um, um, as, an, as an input parameter. Then yeah, I'll just fetch some, some secrets that I've stored in my um, Azure Key Vault. And then again, I'm calling the Azure API management function. I pass the um, the parameter of the of the business partner, and then I'm just um, concatenating and 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 uh, restructuring the the outputs that I'm getting from the SAP system, so that um, in the end I can just pass um, the address with with only the relevant parameters that are interesting for me in my um, Word example um, um, back to the to the address. So so fairly simple, but but again. Uh, shows the, the the power of the integration of um, what we can easily do to connect SAP data into my my Word document. You know, and it can't be overstated enough that a lot of business people, business decision makers, hopefully people who are watching Azure Friday right now, don't know that this stuff exists, so they can't even conceive of how good their solutions could be. Right, yeah. like there are there are enterprise architects now at big companies with names that we recognize who are thinking about it. Well, and then the person on the front end will copy paste from here, and they'll go from Word and they'll go into our system. They'll Alt Tab and they'll hit paste because they don't know that this functionality is available to them. So hopefully they're watching Azure Friday right now, and by showing us these things, their brains are starting to oh, wait a second. We could completely revolutionize our workflow, and yeah. and make it simpler. And and that that's exactly it. Um, I think a lot of at times when I, when I show these scenarios to customers, it's really about inspiring them to get started, to, to really um, jointly then come up with new ideas and, and, and see how we can integrate. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been spending a lot of time in Teams and every time a bot chats me in Teams, I'm still excited about bots. Like they, it's like, you're not a person and I'm talking to you and I can tell you to do stuff. There's a GitHub bot and there's all kinds of cool bots. So if you can go and bring my data to where I'm at already in Teams, then that's a win.
Perfect. So, so let me show you how, how this can be done. So um, going back to our product, um, I am now in Teams. And um, obviously, I'm, I'm uh, working a lot in Teams, um, do, doing stuff, a lot of collaborations there. And now um, I want to take a look at the, um, the information, the product information. Maybe you and I are chatting and, and you want to, um, you're asking me for a good DVD player. And I'm saying, yeah, sure. I, I've seen a very good DVD player. And um, let me actually see how, how much it costs. So I, I just start my conversation here with, with, um, with a welcoming message, basically. So the SAP product lookup bot um, says, well, how can I help you? And what, what I want is I'll just ask the, the bot to show me um, the details of this um, product, HD2000. And again, th this could be something different. I could also ask for the product name or I could ask for a description or something like that. But um, what we see here is now the bot. Again, using the very same concept that, that we talked about before with Logic Apps, with the Azure API management, it now connects to the SAP system and retrieves all the information that we saw in Excel or in this Fiori application um, backend. And you can see, we can even see the, the updated price that we just um, um, updated from, from Excel. And now what I could do is I could order this, um, this or, or maybe I'm an, an administrator, I'm responsible for the for the master data in the SAP system. So I, I could potentially also update this information in the SAP system and all directly here from um, from, from within Teams. Mm, that, no, that's so good. You know, it's, it's, and, it, and it's so fun because you're showing us the future and we're ordering a seven inch DVD player in the future, <laughs> which is amazing. Yes, uh, uh, just to, to explain there a little, um, similar like with Northwind or other uh, demo databases, SAP has a, um, a, a, data, a demo database with, with um, product content that is available there. And yeah, I, I guess they, they should update the demo content there <laughs> to, to also include That's other great. things. Maybe at least to go with a Blu-ray or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, maybe just to, to show you one last example um, that is... That is um, also very relevant, I think, for, for myself, because whenever I go on vacation, I need to remember, oh, what was the URL that I needed to go to to actually submit um, my, my leave request? Um, now what I can also do is I can just um, interact here with a, with a chatbot again. So I'll, I'll just um, maybe um, trigger this, the, this bot, but then what I can, can ask is, um, I really need to go on vacation. So I'll just um, ask um, a question. And um, again, we, we're using, we have an, um, an app um, running on Azure. We have registered this application using the Azure Bet Bot framework. And I would ask me, well, one, when do I want to go on vacation and enter the start date? So I, I could enter the start date, but I think after our recording, I think it would be good for me to go um, on vacation. So I want to go um, today and maybe just um, one day to, to relax. So for tomorrow. And now what happens is um, the bot is now creating the leave request for my user. So, so using um, my identity, really um, single sign on in, into the SAP system, because obviously it needs to check, um, do I have enough um, um, days um, remaining, uh, vacation days remaining and so on. So it really submits this leave request um, in the SAP system. But obviously leave requests um, need to be approved. So what, what happens next is um, that, um, ah, here we go. Um, we, we get an email. Um, you can see this is really live. Uh, it, it took a second or so um, where I have all the relevant information here. So I, I can see what who's the requester. I can see the, re, um, the, the reason. So maybe it is a sick leave or maybe it's a maternity leave or something like that. Um, I have the start date, so uh, today and tomorrow. And now I, as the manager, can just either decline or I can just click on accept. So without leaving my Outlook or potentially this adaptive card could also show up in Teams or it could show up in, in, in other sites. This is really, um, for me, I can stay in my user flow, basically. The leave request is, is approved. And I, since, yeah, in this specific case, the, the manager and the requester are the same person. I also get um, the information that my manager now approved this specific leave request. And even better, we, we've also used, um, again, the Microsoft Graph to also create um, the, the leave request in the calendar. And here we go. Now um, the leave request is also blocked in my exchange calendar and I uh, can now go on vacation, I would say. That's so cool. And it's also worth calling out our friends on adaptive cards because you saw adaptive cards inside of Teams, you saw them inside of Outlook. 
you're going to see more and more adaptive cards, you know, in the future, just throughout everything that you do. And they're really wonderful. Like the idea that you were in an email there, but there was interactivity in the email. And then that lets you ultimately deal with an SAP system on the back end is really amazing. So where, where can I go to learn more about this? So actually, um, we do have an SAP on Azure YouTube channel where we frequently um, post information on anything related to SAP on, on, on Microsoft, where we have also tutorials that basically outline exactly the steps um, that, that you've seen. So, so really step-by-step -step videos where you can walk through this. I think this, this can be a good starting point. And obviously on Microsoft Learn, we have lots and lots of content that is specifically for SAP on Azure. There's a lot of infrastructure related content there, but we're also touching the, the integration topics that we talked about today. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Well, this is so fun. What a wonderful demo, just explaining everything that I need to know and all the possibilities are just out there in front of me. Uh, I really appreciate that. I never realized, like, I knew I could plug these things in together, but not so well. So now I want to just stop the show and I want to go off and play with all this great stuff. Cool. Thank you. Fantastic. I am learning about working with data from SAP in Azure and Office and Graph and Teams and all these wonderful things today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.